Hello and welcome to the Monroe County Library Systems Programming. My name is Elizabeth. Um, I am from the Blue Bush Branch Library. This is my assistant Bethany. She is from the Dorsch Branch Library. And we've already done a segment on basic dog care and now we're going to do a segment on basic manners. Um, manners are very important, especially when you have as many dogs as we do in our house. Normally we only have two. Bethany also has two which she brings over. So four dogs in our house along with five people that is a lot. So basic manners are very important, not just for that reason. Um, we are dog people. We love dogs. Dogs are part of our family. Um, we have friends and family that are not dog people for whatever reason. Maybe it's just not their thing or they've been attacked by a dog or they've had a bad experience. Um, maybe their lifestyle is too busy for a dog. They have other hobbies. We can't all be dog lovers and that is okay. Um, so it is very important to have manners because when they come into my house, they're not gonna be comfortable if my dogs are jumping on them, if they're barking at them, if they're all over them and, and sitting next to them on the couch and it's just gonna make them uncomfortable and I don't want friends and family to feel uncomfortable in my house. I want them to feel welcome just as I want my dogs to feel welcome. So today we're gonna to discuss some basic, basic manners you can teach your new dog or a dog you, you've had for a while. Um, they are very teachable. A Couple things you need to remember. Learn your dog. Some dogs like to play ball. Some dogs don't. Some dogs like to play Frisbee. Some dogs don't. Some dogs like to play in other ways. Maybe through tug of war a little bit or just uh, chasing you around the house. Simple little things. So you're gonna have to learn what your dog likes. Just because you like something, I mean, they might like, they might like it or not like it. So, um, Let's start out with basic dog manners first and then we'll talk about a little bit of play things. Okay, um, as you can see, I have several things on the table here. Um, some basic things if, you're get, if you've gotten a new dog, you're gonna wanna get is a crate, dog dishes, and leashes to walk the dog on. Now, we have several different kinds of leashes here. Um, they come in different lengths. Uh, usually a good, is this six foot? six foot? Usually a good six foot leash is nice. It's also, if you're going to teach them any type of dog obedience and things like that, you're going to want a six foot lead. Um, I do recommend non retractable ones until you get your dog trained. You can use them for later on, but to control a dog, the de um, retractable ones, especially with like her size dog, don't work very well because if she takes off and she's not an obedient dog, that lead can break. It can take off after whatever they're taking off for. It's, it's kind of hard to, to control a little bit. Once they learn to walk, a retractable for a casual walk is very nice. Now, um, we have several different items here. Um, I have some harnesses and I will tell you why and how I fit them for each dog. And as you can see, I, I'm gonna, I'm not, I don't want to say the word, but when we get these things out, they automatically think they're going to go somewhere or they're going to W-A-L-K. I'm not gonna say the word because then you'll see utter chaos and very excitement and I don't want that yet. <laughs> um, we also have a halty, which a lot of times when people see a dog in a halty, they automatically think the dog's going to bite or they're afraid of them. That is not why we use a halty. It is not to stop a dog from biting. I know, we're not, no, I know, I know. 
Um, another couple things that we use, and this can be a little controversial sometimes. Some people believe in chokers, some people do not. Um, we do the chokers only at, when we are going for a walk and we are working on obedient issues. Um, and there is also, oh, but sometimes people are starting to use clickers to train their dogs. We are just now getting into that experience, so hopefully I'll be able to sh share more with you on the clicker training in a, few, in a future video. All right. Now, um, let's see here. Uh, okay, some ground rules when you're training your dog is never just shout out a command. You know, sit, stay, come, because they have no idea they're, who you're talking to. Always start with their name, then the command. Usually you do one word commands like Luna, sit. Huh, that was too easy. Pip, sit. It's very simple, and like I said, it's one word commands with their name. Now, excitement in the yard. I hope you guys can still hear me. <laughs> um, basic commands we're gonna show you today and things for obedience purposes and basic manners are going to be sit, stay, down, Help me. Heel. Heel. Off. Off. Now, uh, real quick, down and off. They are two different commands. Off is when your dog, if you have a dog that jumps on people, off is, you know, pip off. You don't, especially when someone comes to your house, you're going to tell them whoever off, because that way they know not to jump on somebody. I have my mother that lives with us and we work really hard with our dogs on that because we don't want her to n them to knock her over. Um, another one is down. Down, and a lot of people when they come over they have a tendency to tell them down and that's a totally different command for them. Off is the command to get them off of people. Down is the command to get them to lay down. Okay. So, now that we have kind of that, we're going to just show you how this all works. Um, think she'll do it down? Down. Luna, hey, down. Good girl, stay. There you go. That's simple. Now, it took us a while to teach her this, so do not get discouraged. Um, but this is just something you, you want to make sure they can do. Um, treats do motivate dogs, but if you can get away with teaching them without a treat, that is helpful because sometimes when you're out and about or somewhere, you don't have a treat on you to actually do that. And she's doing pretty good staying too. All right. She's the puppy. So we're, we're she's the one we've been working on. Um, this one is Pooh. Come here, Pooh. Come here. She is 12. So for her, she does no sit, poo, sit. Sit. Good girl. Okay, so we've talked about manners in your home. Um, and you know what, don't get discouraged. They're, they're just like children, constant reminders and reinforcement um, when you're training them. Getting, if you get impatient, just stop. It's so much easier because dogs, go by your voice, the sound of your voice, and your reaction to them. If you talk happy and you're all about playing with them, they're going to do what you want to do. If you get frustrated um, and, and you start getting more stern in your voice, they hear that, they feel that, they're not going to do anything. They, they get just as frustrated and they feel how you feel. They can tell. Uh, recommended to work with them maybe 15 minutes a day. 
if they're good after 15, you could go a little longer, but if they're a busier dog in, in 15, 20 minutes a day of just practicing um, and make it fun, make it fun so they know. Uh, they will know what, they, what you expect of them. That's, that's, they will learn. It, it is very, very easy. Um, now basic, um, some people when you walk into their house will teach their dogs they're not allowed to sit on the furniture. That is fine, uh, especially with bigger dogs. I mean, you have a St. Bernard or a Bernese Mountain Dog, you might not want them on your furniture. That's a good 80 pound dog there or more. So that, that's, that's totally understandable. Uh, teaching them not to jump on people. Um, some dogs have a tendency like Luna here, and I will admit she gets excited. She wants to come in, she wants to lick, and she'll nibble at us. That is just her friendly way of saying, hi, how are you, I'm here, and we're trying to break her of it. Those are just things that you, it, you have to tell people. Don't let her do that. You know, just tell her no, um, so that they can help you to work with her. Um, another thing that uh, we try to work with with Luna is no begging. Um, if you never feed a dog people's food, they're never going to know what it tastes like, and they're not going to be under your table when you eat dinner or walking through your kitchen while you're cooking. I wish I could tell you that is the way it is at our house, but I'm not going to lie. It's not. <laughs> um, I'm going to be a whistleblower and tell you my husband is the worst. <laughs> the dogs know what a Cheez-It box looks like. <laughs> which is not a good thing. And they even know popcorn popping in the microwave is a good sign for them. Chances are they're gonna get one. <laughs> uh, so I will, I will warn you, we have tried. Um, we do not feed them when we're at the table. They, they still sit under the table while we, but they, we do not feed them while we're at the table. Now, depending on what you want, what you expect, if you want your dog to obey you, then you need to be the one to take care of the dog. Feed the dog, give it attention, take it for its walks. They need exercise just like we do. Um, that is very important. Um, Bethany here did dog training from fifth grade up. She was in a 4-H group. She did very well with her dog. Um, we do not have that dog anymore, unfortunately. She left us when Bethany was in college. But let me tell you, she had good results because she was the one that fed her and bathed her and took care of her all the time. So that dog could have cared less about me. So it was very, very important. And you don't realize until you're in situations of training how important that is. Um, I'm going to cover now, before we get into some demonstrations, socializing your dog. Uh, very important. We're working with Luna right now. She doesn't like dogs that are bigger than her, but we have got her now in a dog group where she is around dogs that are bigger than her. A lot of times they aren't, don't like dogs bigger because they're afraid. They, they, they don't know what to expect. They're just like us when we're in situations that we're not used to. It, you got to feel it out and get used to it. Uh, the more exposure she has, the better she gets. We do things to give her confidence. And I'm going to show you a couple of things we do that is very easy for you to do at home to build their confidence. Now, okay, um, as you can see, we're pretty relaxed here today. We've had a busy morning. So let's start with just sizing our collars and chokers and kind of showing you what that looks like. You want to put Pip up here? Now this is Pip. She is seven? No, she's five. Five? She's five. Boy, time flies when you're having fun. Okay. Um, she walks good on a harness, um, usually. usually, but we have been using um, a choker for her to get used to it because we've been working her obedience. Now, we've got two different chokers here. What we're going to do is show you the difference between the two. One 
is longer than the other. The shorter one goes on PIP, the longer one will go on Luna. You make a P. Make a P so it kind of looks like that. And you fit it over their face. You want to make sure that this part is on the top. And see how it loosens when you pull it, it tightens up a little bit and see how it loosens. Now, um, and then you hook a lead to it. You usually use the leather one on her? I usually, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Now, same thing with Luna. Luna up. Up, Luna. Up. Come on. Good girl. Turn around. Sit. Good girl. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna feed it through. So you've got that. Nope, sorry. Ugh. And you're gonna make sure you've got enough room that when it pulls it's it's not tight. And you want it on top. And you want it on top. All right. Now, we will demonstrate with her. This is the halty. It hooks from the side of their mouth. What are you doing? Like that? <laughs> and then around the back. Does it? And it hooks at the bottom? Yep, just like that. All right. So you're going to have the halty goes on the bottom. What this does is put pressure on the nose. And when you hook a lead to it, it pulls. When we first started walking her, this worked better so that we had more control and she was learning how to walk with us. This makes sure there's enough room in the halty that they can open their mouth, they can bark, they can lick. It's not to muzzle them. Um, and this is adjustable so it fits around her head and it hooks at the bottom. And like I said, this was great when we learned, we're teaching her how to walk on a lead. It was much easier. Of course, she rubbed her face all over the grass because she hated it, but she, it, it, it worked for the purpose we wanted to teach her, and that was how to walk on a, on a leash. Now she's kind of graduated to a choker a little bit. Um, this way, she walks and if she gets a little out of hand, we could just pull this a little bit and the tightness on her neck, she slows right up. All right. It's used for correction, not constant pressure. This is used for correction, not constant pressure. So, okay, down. Good girl. Off. Oh yeah, wrong command, it was off. off. See, even I make mistakes. Oh, All right, now, Oh, this is Pooh. Pooh is 12 years old. And as you can see, old dogs rule. She is the oldest dog in the group. Um, her feet are turned out. We, had, we adopted her. Um, she, she's very feet sensitive and leg sensitive. Um, Pooh loves to go. So we harness her. This is her harness. As you can see, she normally will. Come on jump up and lift her legs up to go in it because she knows it clips on her back it is adjustable okay. we make sure that it's loose enough that she can breathe and it's not constricting but it's tight enough it's not going to completely come off of her and then we hook the lead to the back like that we find that this works better for her because she is a fast pace dog, believe it or not, at 12. Faster pace than I am. So to put the pressure here on her chest, that's what slows her down. Is that pressure, when I pull this, it puts pressure here and it will, it will remind her, hey, I don't walk as fast as you. So she, she kind of likes that. This, this is the one we have found to be comfortable for her. Now, down. 
I know. No, I know what you think. Come here. I'm going to unhook you. You did good. You did good. Okay. No. Okay. Now. Oh, that's going to bring our last dog up finally. Come here. Come here. Oh. Now this dog is our newest dog. She is 10. We got her when she was four. And this is where you have to know your dog. <laughs> I know. Now, she is deaf. When we got her, she could hear, but she has problems with yeast infections in her ears, and it has made her deaf as much as we've attended to them. Um, she has some health issues. A lot of it was the environment she was in before we got her. She was in a puppy mill. She was used for breeding for three years. And as you can see, she's very docile, very simple dog. She is a dog that when we go for a walk, we have learned she walks behind us. She wants to see everybody. She wants to see what's in front of her. If you stop, um, she stops dead she, she, in her tracks. She is not going to, she wants you ahead of her. So I was originally just walking her with her collar and it has a tendency to pull because she walks behind like that. So I recently got her a harness with a clip on the front. So it fits just like the other one. It's mesh on the bottom, so it's nice and soft. It doesn't rub under her armpits or anything. And I can hook a leash right to the front. So as you can see, this is going to be much more comfortable for her because she's behind me. She follows me. Um, it's kind of nice when we go because she is the type of dog that could care less about any other dog. She doesn't I mean, she doesn't get excited about it. They, she can walk right by them and doesn't care. So I really never have a problem with her. Um, she, I know she is just she's really sweet and just she's very docile and perfect for this. Um, so yeah, so her harness hooking in the front is is a good thing. All right, now. Let's show you manners of walking on a leash. Which one do you want to lose? use? Luna? Okay. No, come, Luna. These are your basic commands for walking. Do you want to walk around the rug? Is that? I, I never thought about that. We can. Okay. You always want to teach them when they sit. You want it to have them at your side. That way they, they look up to you. You're in control. You're good. Okay. The first command you're going to do is Luna heel. That's how you're going to start out. Heel basically means to walk at your side. And I will tell you, we are working on her with this. So it's not going to look perfect at this moment. As she says her name, see how Luna looks up at her at all times to see that she's in control? Good. That, she, that she's got her attention. And see how she has her walking at her side. Nope. And as, you, as a puppy, I mean, she gets, oh. She gets distracted like everybody else. She, she's learning. Um, and then you always reward them somehow, either with attention. As you can see now, she knows that Bethany has a treat, and she is really paying attention to Bethany. So that is just, and you can walk around your yard like this. You can practice having them sit. Um, it's a great way, or just walk up and down the, the if, you, if you're in a subdivision, just walk in front of your house up and down the road. Um, 
course, now she's got everybody's attention because she opened the treat jar. <laughs> so that is, you know, basic heel and sit when you're walking them. Now, a couple other things you can work on is to sit and stay. Um, she's going to have Luna ha go have her sit. Then she'll give her the command to stay. Stay. No, I don't want your question. Stay. Now, as you can see, she's teaching her to wait. You can use the command of wait or stay, um, but it teaches them patience. Oh. And that's why you have them on the lead. It's something you're going to have to do over and over. And like I said, this is something, this is new, what we've been working on her with. Uh, if you ever, um, when we did 4-H obedience, this was for three minutes that we had to teach them to stay and be able to walk away from them, which is a long time if you think about it. Um, and basically, if they break it, I mean, you, you of course are out of the competition, but um, for this, it's just something you want to teach them because you never know when you're going to want them to sit and stay. Like if you're talking with someone, run into somebody, you know, hey, how are you doing? They have to learn to be patient, just like a child. And as you can see, she's not being very patient today. They get very distracted. <laughs> so like I said, you're just going to keep working on her and working on her with them. Um, now, just so you guys know, um, and I learned, we learned this recently, dogs don't know a language. So they don't know what stay means. So if you want to use words that are totally off the wall and different, and you will only know what that means to them, you can do that. If you want to learn, teach her that stay, or you want to use the word chicken, you can tell her, Luna, chicken. And that could mean stay to her. She do, does not know a language or what words actually mean. You teach them what a word would mean to her. So that's kind of interesting fact. I thought it would kind of be fun to get a dog and teach it, you know, different names of food for different commands. Just to make it fun for me. <laughs> um, now, now that we've done basic obedience, which you can work on at home, let's talk about some different things you can do just to help them out. Uh, socializing. Um, once you teach them to wor work, on, work on a lead and uh, you've gone to the park and different things, maybe you want to go there are local businesses that do allow you to bring your dog in um, make sure you have control of your dog make sure you know what you're doing whenever you go out and about make sure you take with you dog bags very important i don't care where you're going take dog bags with you um, another thing we carry with us is a portable dog dish for water and a little thing of water. Some snacks, different stuff like that. Um, it's just basic, just like packing a diaper bag for a child. That's, you learn to take it with you. Um, but the local places you can go are Lowe's, PetSmart, Pet Supplies. Um, nothing like taking your dog into PetSmart to let him pick out its own toy kind of fun um, but it does teach them a little bit of socialization meeting people when someone walks up to your dog make sure you caution them they need to ask is your dog friendly may I pet it um, in a lot of these places people are are using to work with working dogs dogs that will have a job they normally do not like you to pet these dogs 
they're, they're going to serve a purpose to someone someday and they need to be able to go in a place and when they go in there they are serving a purpose and doing a job for someone. They are not there to socialize and be pet, have you pet them. They usually have on a vest that will say that, just so you know. These don't. Uh, okay, now playtime. Um, we have this, I'll bring it over. This is um, plastic little balls, and it's a, ba a kid's pool that I ha I've had for a long time. And um, this teaches the dog self-confidence. Now, when Luna first saw this, we were, we were somewhere else. Someone else gave us the idea. Best ideas are stolen ideas sometimes. Um, she Stay. was afraid of it. She didn't know what to think. It made a lot of noise. She's, and we were trying to build her confidence. So what you do is you take some treats. And as you can see, she's going to get quite excited because she knows what it is now. She throws, you throw them in. Wait. Luna, hey, stay. 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 Okay. Go okay, go. Now she will sniff around, look for the treats. It's kind of a fun game for her. Um, sometimes we throw her um, favorite ball in there, so see, she, if she, see if she can tell it from the other balls. These are just things you can do with your dog that are fun. They kind of look forward to it. When I break the pool out with the balls, the dogs get excited. And as you can see, she's in it. She's like sniffing around it gives her self-confidence it makes it fun something to do just like toys for kids um you want to let pip out um a few other fun things we found hey luna look what i got this is a frisbee now this dog is our Frisbee dog. We want her to do anything or train her. We don't need to use treats. We use a Frisbee. Because as you can see, she's very intent on the Frisbee. Um, just like us, these dog needs exercises and this gives her a reason to have exercise. She will chase the Frisbee all day and bring it back. Now to show you um, to give you an idea how long this takes, um, we were, let go, uh, very discouraged when she first got her because she didn't want to fetch. And now that's all she wants to do. The minute she comes here, she digs that thing out. And this, this, is, this is her thing. You in here. Ready? So those are just basic ideas for you to work on with manners, toys for your dogs, learning new things. Um, some future videos to look forward to is we're going to do some, um, our next is once you've moved around obedience and things, you're going to do extra activities with your dog. Um, we're going to talk about um, dog agility. We're going to talk about the obedience. Um, we might even be able to show you a lore chasing, um, which she absolutely loves. It's just a way for them to get pent up energy and have fun. Um, so look forward to that video. We're also going to do a gour doggy gourmet food. Dogs love pumpkin, so we're going to teach you how to make some treats that don't have sugar and stuff in them that they can have and is good for them. And then we're going to work on some tricks and fun things. And we're also going to have one on things you might have at home that you can use to work with them. I really appreciate your time. I hope this has been a helpful video. And you have a great day. Thanks.